so good. That was uh, So Lost by MK2. You can get it on the uh, free use section of YouTube. Great music. Um, and thank you to MK2 for making your wonderful music free for me to use. Um, today, on I Want Alpha, which is what this is, I believe, uh, I'm Dr. Mermitzva, and we're going to be talking about War Standings, Missions, and LP, um, or Loyalty Points. I guess we'll get right on into it, no reason not to. Um, first, before we get into that, uh, I want to take a second and just talk about the kinds of uh, space there are, because um, it's kind of relevant to what we're saying. Um, there's high sec, low sec, null sec, NPC null sec, and wormhole space. And high sec is any system that, as like the system I'm in now, Miator, um, if you look all the way up there, up here in the corner, 0 0.7, uh, high sec is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1.0. In those systems, if you shoot somebody unlawfully, you don't have a war with them, You're, they're not suspect, um, or you didn't activate a kill right, you've broken the law and Concord will come dunk you. Um, in low sec, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0.1, um, there is no Concord. However, if you fight somebody unlawfully on a gate or near a station in low sec, they have little guns and they will shoot you. And the lower the sec status, the more guns. Or the higher the sec status, the more guns. Just like high sec. Uh, Concord reacts faster with more of them force in uh, higher security systems like point ones or 1.0s, I mean. Blah, I'm going to be doing that a lot. And then there's uh, null sec, which is anything 0, 0.0 or lower. And uh, sov null, as it's called, is uh, systems that players can take sovereignty over, and it shows their name up here, or it shows a Mar Empire, it'll say whoever, you know, the Gungan Empire or Goon Swarm or whatever they put up there. And uh, NPC null is zero zero or lower systems where there's absolutely no police, no gate guns, no nothing. You can use bubbles, you can use bombs. All of null is like that. Um, and NPC null is just systems that players can't claim. And there's usually NPC stations, the non player characters, the AI. And uh, you can do missions for them out there and stuff like that. And very high paying. Uh, we'll get into that later. And then there's uh, wormhole space, which uh, you can only access by finding a wormhole. Uh, generally you probe those down and uh, the wormholes don't have gates, they have wormholes to other wormholes. And there's systems like Thera, is, there's a system with uh, stations in it. And uh, well now they have a citadel so I guess it doesn't matter. But, uh, and it has hundreds, of a huge system with hundreds or you know a hundred wormhole connections all over the place. And a lot of guys like to PvP out of there because every day they're somewhere else through a wormhole. Um, and there's, you know, we won't get too much of that. Okay, so when we're talking about war, uh, generally war only really matters in high and low sec. Anywhere else, null sec or wormhole space, you can just shoot them anyway. It doesn't matter. There's no standings loss or anything like that. Um, no one's going to get mad that you shot them. Nobody cares. It's the Wild West. Um, however, in um, high or low sec, you, if you don't want the guns to react, the gate guns and station guns in low sec, or all that stuff plus Concord in high sec, you need to be at war. Um, so you can fight those people wherever. And a lot of people, there's a lot of groups that just use war decks to, uh, to declare war, to uh, harass people and extort money out of them and just be general pains in the asses. They pick really big groups, they war deck them, all their buddies join the war, and then they just sit around Jita and Amar, the big trade hubs. Though Dixie is the Galente one, and Renz would be the uh, Mimitar trade hub, the biggest ones. And they just try to kill their guys, leaving the trade hub with stuff they bought, etc. Getting free kills because they're scrubs. So, um, I just think it's a really lame way to play the game. I mean, it's what they like, so hey, more power to you, but go out and do some real PvP, boys. You're kind of just being a pain in the ass to everyone else not really accomplishing anything. I guess if you're there farm peers, you're there farm peers, whatever. And um, so that's kind of how war decks work. You, you you pay more for how big the corp is, you declare war. And a lot of gr these groups will like war deck uh, big null sec groups, catch their guys shipping stuff in high sec. 
that's generally how it goes. Or if you just want to remove someone's structures, you want to blow up someone's customs offices or something else, or their POS, you war deck them, and then all the guys in your corporate alliance can lawfully shoot the fuck out of their stuff. Um, in faction warfare, um, we're at war. Uh, when you join the Amar um, faction warfare, the Imperial Crusade, um, you're now at war with all the people in the other faction warfare, we're against the Mimitar, but we also have to worry about Caldari Galente. Um, the Amar is allied with the Galdari, so Galente we are at war with, and um, which we call it. I'm pretty sure it works. I'm pretty sure you're at war with all those players that they can shoot you anywhere. And then, uh, as well as the uh, Mimitar, I definitely could shoot Mimitar anywhere, and they could shoot us anywhere. And sometimes the uh, Mimitar faction warfare guys, or vice versa, will go to the Amar, and they just... Because when you're at war, when you're in Mimitar, and you're at war with Amar, you can go to Amar high sec. Concord won't shoot you, but the Amar police will come after you. And they have a slower response time. If you have enough stuff, you can actually fight them off and just stay, stay outside. And for some odd reason, the game still lets you dock at their stations, so... They just use station games and warping off and stuff like that, repping, you know, use Lodgy to kind of hang out in your trade hub and harass you. Um, what else? War, war, war. And then, obviously, there's all the other stuff, faction warfare. That's like another kind of warfare. You know, there's there's high-sec wars, there's faction warfare. Um, it's a little bit different. Kind of the same rules apply, though. And... Um, Then we'll get into standings. Uh, basically what standings are, and I'll open up so you can hear it. Well, actually, let me open up the war page first and just go through that. Be kind of thorough. Social. Where's the wars? It's probably under corporation. Go to social, corporation. Uh, wars. The good old war page. And it just says... Oh, see, here we go. We are at war with Galente. See, the, the, I joined the Amar faction, and um, I, I enlisted my corp in faction warfare. And now we're at war with all the Galente guys, and we're at war with all the Mimitar guys in, in their, whoever joined their faction warfare groups. Um, and this all war shows you literally all the wars that are in progress right now. And if you look through here, you'll probably see a bunch of guys that just harass people endlessly. Uh, let's see. Free candy to get in the van alliance. That's kind of creepy. Um... Like Vendetta and Mercery Group, and there's you'll just see like the same guys. Mar my Collective, they're notorious. They're they're a real pain in the ass. Uh, they war. That's what they do. They just war deck people over and over. And if you look at the war, you can you can click on a little box comes up. It tells you about the. Uh, oh, that's that's the alliance formation. I want the actual. Oh, see, and you can you can join these wars. I don't really want to do that, but. Yeah, there you go. You can, you can see the kill reports, who's killed what in this war, how much isk and ships, and blah, blah, blah. Um, that's just all the war declarations. Blah, blah, blah. There's page after page of it, I'm sure. And you can join in other people's wars if you want more, more targets to shoot. And you can see Marmite has a ton of them. They join all kinds of wars and Vendetta. And yeah, look, see, there's, there's like these groups, they... War deck, Pandemic Horde, and Circle of Two, all these big null set groups just to catch them in trade hubs to get free kills. So they can tell themselves, look how good I am, I killed all this stuff that wasn't even thinking about fighting back because I abused a shitty mechanic. Anywho, um, so that's just kind of the wars thing. Um, it just Concord sanctions, and when you activate a war, it takes a couple days to activate, or 24 hour activation, something like that. And then it, it lasts for a set duration, and if you want to keep going, you got to pay more. And uh, it works both ways. They can shoot you, you can shoot them. Um, and there's not really, uh, it's kind of hard to get out of it, uh, a war deck. So you have to, like, drop corpse as soon as it's coming. And So there are ways the war decks can follow you. I'm not 100% all the mechanics because I'm in faction warfare, so I'm just always at war. But if you really want to get into the uh, mechanics of it, you can always check out um, Eve, Eve Wiki, and they will have pages and pages of description about exactly how everything in a war works. Um, I've been kind of general. I generally, uh, all my videos, I'm just kind of general. Things you need to know to be in my corp, really. But uh, if you want to go more into depth, do that. 
eWiki has all the little details. Now we'll go to standings. Um, standings is complicated. There's a lot of different standings. You can set personal standings to anybody, any corp, whatever. You can go into your account. I'll do it right now so you can see it. And I don't really mess with it that much. But if I go to like people and places and I look up a friend, uh, say this guy, right? And I can, my buddy Dr. Bronner, he's in my corp. All right, so if I look at him and I say standings, I can place a bounty on them, but there is a way. Maybe it's automatic. This is my corp info. No, not that guy. Back. Dr. Bronner. So. Let's stretch this out. There should be a way. Oh, that's his derived standing from the corp and everything else, but he's in the corp. Actually, let me get someone who's not in my corp because I think it's being weird about that because he's in my corp as a set standing. So let me just go to people and places, and we'll find fucking Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo. Or fucking Bob. We'll just type Bob. And there's probably a zillion people with Bob. Characters. 418 people with the name Bob. So we'll go Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Alright, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. So now this random guy, I can uh, add contact to Bobby, and I can pick where I want to put him in standings. Make him bread if I think he's an asshole or whatever. So when I see him, he'll have a little thing right here. Whatever I set that at, he'll have a little thing right here, and it'll be a certain color, whatever I set him at. Also good to know is uh, when you meet people and you want to remember things about it, you can type, hey, this guy sucks. Cucks. He's a, he's a cuckold. Um, so uh, you can type stuff like that, and then next time you see him, you can check your notes and see if there's anything you left about him. Oh, this guy killed me with a thorax, and he had off-grid links. Stuff like that. Um, so that's standings with personal standings. And there's... Um, and if I go into my thing, I go to standings. There should be where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Standings. Uh, you can see your own standings. Who you are liked by, who you're disliked by, and it's broken down by uh, agents, corps, and factions. Um, it's kind of like a hierarchy. You can be friends with a specific agent, but that corp doesn't like you, or that alliance, or that faction doesn't like you. And uh, like I said, there's all the, the major high sec factions. Um, even like Amar is broke up into like Condid, Amatar, Amar, and uh, most of the other ones are kind of the same way. Um, and there's Sanchez, Garistas, all the pirate ones. And I've been doing missions, so I've been shooting pirates, and they don't like me a little bit. Not a big deal. You can use their skills that can fix bad standings or improve good standings. Um, so the Imperial 24th, they like me because I've been doing missions for my faction warfare guy, so they think I'm good. And uh, the faction, the Amar faction, and all their allies are like, oh, you're pretty good. The Kaldari are allied. So these guys are telling me, uh, these guys like me. And then here's all the agents I've been doing mission for who I've built personal standings with by doing missions for them. Um, and then, of course, if you're helping the Amar, the Mimitar probably don't like it. So when I'm running these buttons and doing these missions, I'm shooting Amar stuff, or Mimitar stuff, and the Mimitar say, screw you, asshole. Same thing with the Blood Raiders and the Pirates that are around here. I've shot a few of them, so they're mad. And uh, some of the missions have me killing them. And um, a few, when you get missions for like Amar, you get missions shooting the Galente or shooting the Mimitar. So over time, even if you run like the high there's there's high sec missions or whatever, you will piss off other factions. And if you get low enough, if I get negative five with um, Mimitar, I can't go to their high sec or the police will come after me. I can cut through, go gate to gate, not a big deal. But if I go in something too slow that can't align and work, they'll, they'll catch me. The police will catch me and blow me up. Um, I can go. To, I can dock in their stations, but I have to be quick about it. And if somebody sees that the police are mad at me and, and Rens, in this Mimitar space, their trade hub, and I undock at Rens, all they have to do is point me and hold me there for long enough for the police to show up, and they'll probably fuck me up. Unless I have something really good, or I dock back up. So that's kind of how that works with your, your standings. You don't want to get too bad with the major empires because you can't. You have police come after you if you go there. Um, and then there, there's a uh, so this is the standings. This is where you stand with different corps, factions, uh, and agents. Um, and to do missions, you have to have certain standings with their faction or their corp or that person. You unlock higher missions as you do it. Um, I do missions for level one guys, and uh, that makes their corp happier, and thus their faction happier, and it kind of trickles upwards. And then as I get this standing high enough, I get a 2.0, then the level 2 agents say, oh, you can talk to us. And I do a bunch of missions for them, which gives me a higher boost than the level 1 missions. And eventually my standings gets to level 3, and they say, oh, you can do the level 3 agents now. And if you look over here, 
Uh, now I can do low and two and three, and I can't do the fours yet. When I get my corpse standing up to four by doing these missions, then this guy will talk to me, and I can do the four missions, which is where the money is. And this is a faction warfare corp station, so these are faction warfare missions they're offering, which pay out pretty good. Um, so that goes over kind of how standings work, and you have personal standings. There's also, um, you might have good standings, like personal standings with Mimitar, but if you go and join a faction warfare corp uh, that's against Mimitar, you join my corp, the Amar faction warfare, um, I want Alpha, um, what'll happen is the Mimitar will say, well, we like you, but your corp's a bunch of assholes and you join them, so now you have bad standings because of the standings derived from your corp. So keep that in mind. Um, there's the standings towards you, and if you go to the EVE, uh, you, I was looking at it earlier before I did this, because there's some confusion even I have, I kind of understand how it works, they, but there's, um, where is it, where is it, where is it, you go to the e, uh, EVE Uni wiki, and there's a standings and standing mechanics page, it's quite, quite helpful, and we'll describe things in much more depth than I'm going to do here, but there's corporation standings, which is the standings that your corp has towards somebody, and then there's corporate standings, which are how they, the NPCs feel about your corp. So it's confusing, but you know, just keep that sorted out. There's personal standings, corporate standings, and faction standings, and those things go both ways. Um, how you feel about them, how they feel about you, and there's all kinds of uh, social skills that can improve those things and, and help you out there. Um, that's kind of all I really wanted to go over standing. It's just a brief kind of get you where it's in. And then there's uh, sex status, and I don't want to skip this. I have to talk about sex status. Um, that's something completely different. Let me go ahead and uh, open up my character. Your security status is displayed right here when you first open your character sheet right there. And that is simply Concord's, how Concord feels about me. Not their corporation or anything like this. It's a different type of number. All right, because my Concord standings would be whether or not I can do missions for them, blah, blah, blah. My security status is like an all-reaching, this is how piratey you are. Um, mine's a little bit negative because I've shot a few people in low sec unlawfully. I killed a few guys that came to my novice plex that were neutral, but I wanted them dead. And they were probably going to shoot me anyway. So as once you go below, as long as you stay above negative 2, um, not 0 0.2 like I am, but two. if you're negative 2.0, that's when you have a problem in uh, 1.0 systems uh, they will come after you after a few seconds you have time but you gotta move your ass and uh, anybody's pretty sure when you're negative 2 in a 1.0 system it makes you open to attack from like anyone or maybe no 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 that's negative 5 you actually get true pirate and anyone can shoot you anywhere um, but then as that goes down negative 3 or yeah negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 um, that's the different levels of high sec you're no longer allowed in. And maybe it's every other one. I should really look this up. I'm going to look it up on the Eve Wiki Uni just so I say it properly. And everyone's like going, oh, you fucked it up, you fucking retard. Why would you do these videos and say it wrong? Wah, 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 wah. But it's just I'm making you aware of it. That these things exist and you need to know about them. And uh, I'm trying to help you know about them, but I kind of screw up sometimes. I right, will search security status. And, uh,. What is this? Eve Uni, don't fail me now. I gotta find some funny, uh, the exact, it tells you, uh, there we go. Security status, so well, here it goes. Okay, negative 2 systems, you will be attacked in 1.0 space. Negative 2.5, you'll be attacked in 0.9. Negative 3, 0.8. Negative 3.5, you'll be attacked in 0.7. Negative 4, you'll be attacked in 0.6. And negative 4.5 or lower, and you will be attacked in all of high sec, 0.5 to, to 1.0. There it is. Um, And it says here, once you hit negative 4.95, you're considered an outlaw and can be attacked by anywhere without 
Concord interfering. You're called a perma flashy pirate, whatever. Players with negative ratings can go through all systems in a capsule. NPCs will not attack pods. But if you're negative 4.95, anyone can destroy your pod without repercussion. Good to know. So that's their, their sex status thing is pretty short. Um, I'll talk real quick about if you have bad sex status and you're doing lots of piratey stuff like me and shooting people every chance you get. Um, what will it, what will happen? And it's important to know in null sec, you you don't lose sex status. You can shoot anyone you want in wormholes too. It doesn't affect your sex status. It's just low sec and high sec. What you do affects your sex status. Um, what was I saying? Lose sex status and then uh, fuck. I lost my spot. I was saying. Oh, was it just looking at? I'm probably having a brain fart here. Sorry. Standing sex ass or something else I want to bring up, but I forget. I think that was it. I guess. Oh yeah, tags. Derp, there it is. Uh, sorry, too too much alcohol last night. My brain's kind of fried. Um, tags. There are these tags, and you get them in low sec. And uh, if you go to low sec belts, uh, that's a Point uh, six. I'm sorry, a point four, three, point two, or point one system. Um, and you go to the belts and you find these things randomly spawn called clone soldiers. Uh, killing the clone soldier gives you a big sex status boost, as well as they always drop tags. And uh, depending on how the the sex status of the system you're in when you kill him. So if you find him in a point uh, three system. The tag that he drops will improve your sex status to a certain spot from like negative 0.4 to 0.2. And uh, so you have to go to all the different types of low sec. You have to go to 0.1s, 0.2s, 0.3s, 0.4s. If you want to click the tags, and you go to a Concord station, turn the tags in, and they'll fix your sex status. Um, you can usually just find the things for sale if you don't want to bother ratting. You can just go buy the tags and spend some money and go to a Concord station and fix your sex, fix your sex status and not be a pirate anymore. So that's one way to just fix that if you uh, want to get back in the ice and your pirating days are over or whatever. Um, so I just want to real quick tuck on tags and how to fix your sex status. Otherwise, just ratting. If you kill any pirates, it'll slowly increase your sex status. You go to null sec and rat anomalies for days, your sex status will go up and up and up. And you know, running missions uh, where you're killing pirates, bloods, and you know the the blood raiders and you know, garistas and all that stuff, that will also increase your uh, sex status. Um, oh, so it does it more slowly. The clone soldiers is the fast way to do it, and the, and the clone tags they drop is the fast way to fix your standings. Um, I want to talk about missions. Um, I'm going to do it briefly. This is kind of going a lot longer than I expected already. Um, so, for um, missions... Um, well, I, I already touched on it a little bit with your uh, standings. You can do you can do point one missions for anybody. Um, I'm just going to talk about the different kinds of missions. Um, now, when people generally talk about level four missioning, there's um, level one through five actually, but the fives only spawn in low sec, and you need capitals to do them basically, or a barger I think can know them. But that's off the topic. We'll just talk about one through fours right now. Um, when people are generally talking about missions, there's, there's a set of, there's probably about 50 different missions you can get, and there's also burner missions, which you can decline with no penalty. And when you get these missions, um, you talk to an agent, I'll show you a little conversation. These are faction warfare, but they're similar. And he'll say, hi, blah, 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 I like you, and I'll say, request a mission down there. And they'll say, okay, they give you destroy this vessel, go to this system, and I can right-click and set Desto, and it's, it's far away. Usually there'll be one or two jumps, but these are different missions, or I'll get into that in a second. And then it tells you ship restrictions. It tells you you're only allowed to use these frit ships because the acceleration gate will not allow other things through. It's good to know. Um, and generally, like level four, regular level four missions, they all allow battleships. You can use any battleship you want. Um, but level threes or twos probably won't. They don't let a battleship through the gate. Um, and they tell you how much reward. And there's skills that they, there's uh, social skills that can increase these rewards, increase the loyalty to point rewards, and increase you know. The bonus rewards, all this stuff can be increased through skills. 
so you can make more. But the real money in most missions is in loyalty points, and we'll get into that in a second. So it's important if you're doing high sec missioning and you're close to low sec, make sure you're not going to be in low sec with your missioning battleship because it'll probably die in a fire. Um, it's important also to uh, mission for the right agents, uh, and, and, and uh, the lower the sec status of the system, the higher the payouts. If you go the 0.5 system in high sec, the missions will pay more than a 0.1 or a 1.0 system. If you go to low sec, a 0.2 system will pay more than a 0.4 system. If you go to null sec, the same thing. The sec status, the true sec, you go to the NPC, the pirate space that players can't claim in uh, null sec, NPC so or NPC null. Um, you can do missions for like the Blood Raiders and those guys if you have the standings and they allow you. Um, and uh, when you do those, they get huge payouts because it's null sec. Really, really, you can make big money. And that's how. Um, and then um, that's pretty much all the missioning. And then there's there's faction warfare missions. And if you're in the faction warfare, basically what it is is um, the corporation for that faction, like it's uh, 24th Imperial Crusade for uh, Amar. It's Tribal Liberation Force for um, the Mimitar, and it's like Fed Navy for Galente and some else like that for Kaldari. I can't remember. Kaldari State Protectorate or something. Um, <clears throat> so those corporations have missions, and if you're if your corp is in the faction, or if you're just in, in, by yourself in faction warfare in the uh, that actual corp, it unlocks all these faction warfare missions. And when you go to any 24th Imperial Crusade, it'll have level one through four missions. These missions spawn a long way to go. You have to, you have to often fly 10 jumps, so people will do a lot of them. You, you go around to all the 24th stations, pick up a bunch of like level 3s from all the different agents at each station of your 24th stations, and uh, you go run them all at once because they all kind of spawn in a similar area. It's just more efficient that way than going all the way out there and all the way back to do one mission. You go all the way out there, go over like 10 jumps, hit 8 missions, and then come back. It's very efficient. Um, and uh, the other thing about these missions, they give huge payouts, but uh, the, the faction warfare missions, when you warp to one, it spawns a beacon that everyone can see in their overview, and they can warp directly to it. As soon as you warp to that mission in that system, it's your mission. No one else can open it. If you open it and warp to it, though, anyone can warp there and catch you. Be very careful doing faction warfare missions. Regular missions, and they can be in high sec, low sec, or null sec, uh, that are non-faction warfare missions, not from the faction warfare agents and their corps. Um, those missions, when you warp to them, they spawn you at a basically a safe spot, a spot that no one can warp to unless they probe it down, or they already have it bookmarked for whatever other reason. You you showed them the way in there and they bookmarked it. Um, that's a pretty good summary of all the missions. And there's security missions where you shoot the bad guys. There's research missions where you research blueprints and you get a payout stuff like that. There's mining missions where you mine a certain amount of ore in a certain spot and you bring it back. And uh, that kind of there's there's a whole wide range of missions. Um, all the uh, faction warfare ones are security missions. And then there's uh, burner missions, which is a, I tried them and I kept dying them. I couldn't quite get a fit that worked, or I don't have the skills or whatever. But I was spending all these money on crazy fits and just losing them, and it wasn't worth it. So I just didn't do the burners. There was a bunch of guides for them. The payout's pretty good. I knew some guys that were doing them in groups, and that seemed to work out great. They go out in like three daredevils, and they just run all the burners together, and they were killing it like that. They're making tons of money, and they're doing it in null sec where they're worth a lot. So something to look into if you uh, ever want to make shit tons of money doing those burner missions. But I don't really know much about those. I do know that you can decline as many burner missions as you want without penalty. So I just don't do them. Um, you can, re and every four hours, you can decline a mission. If you just don't want to do that mission, it goes somewhere you don't want to go, or you just the mission takes forever and the payout's not good. Whatever, you can decline one mission from an agent every four hours without penalty. Good to know. And once you're, if you get your faction standings real high, like say my faction with Mar gets up real, real high, um, I can decline more missions. And it just it, it, before as long as my standings with the faction stay over like 5.0, I'm good. So I can just decline and decline and decline until I get missions I want. Maybe the missions I do faster to blitz and make more money. Um, and there's lots of guides on missions out there. Um, what was the one I used to always use? Eve Survival has guides and specific information about tons of missions. And then the LP store. This is probably the most important part of the whole thing. Uh, when you do missions. You can see here, like this guy's offered this mission, view mission, and he's offered me some loyalty points. What that is is loyalty points. You can, there's a special store for each corporation. You go to there, 
that corpse um, station, one of them, most corpses have many stations, and you go to this thing right up here, it's called the loyalty point store. And you open this up and it says, this is all stuff that I can buy, and I can use some of the LP costs, I can use some of those points I get from the missions instead of money. Now, all, pretty much all the LP stores sell some of the same things, the standard implants and the you know, different ratings of implants, and you can sort this by how much they cost for different things, whatever. But just as an example, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just buy something as an example. Buy ocular filter, it's a standard, so it costs 12,000 LP and 12,000 S. Now if I go look in the market, all right, I'm gonna look for an ocular filter, standard. Ocular filter, and then I'll find the standard one, standard. And they're selling for about a little under 24 mil. Okay, so basically what's happening here is I'm paying 12 mil and 12,000 LP for something worth 24. So I'm converting 12,000 LP into 12 million ISK, the rest of that price after I subtract that. That's how you figure out how much ISK per LP you're making. I'm making a million ISK per thousand LP. Now different items at different stores will be worth different things, and some of the more valuable items this one doesn't really have it. Um, some of the more value items you'll make. In fact, this loyalty point store seems like it's missing stuff. Where's all the ships? There should be a Mars ships in here that I can produce. There's blueprints for an Omen 80, but where's the actual? Okay, it must be in here somewhere. Let me go to uh, LP costs. Sort of by that. This is really weird. You, I guess they maybe they changed it. You used to be able to make the. Uh, LP right into ships. And I don't know. Oh, show affordable only. Show all. Now I can see everything. Okay, there we go. I didn't have enough LP to do these, so it didn't show them. Um, but see, you can make the Navy issue ships using the LP. And that's generally when you want to cash in a shit ton of LP. Like, look, 250,000 LP, and I need an apocalypse and one of these chips. And if I have these items, I have 250,000 LP. I get this, which is worth about, I don't know half a billion isk or something like that, the prices go up and down. Um, probably less now, because I think all the faction ships have gone down. But like something like an Omen, uh, the Omen navies right here, these chips probably cost like 10 mil, and then 45,000 LP, no isk cost, and an Omen, that's probably another 10 mil, so I'm probably putting about 20 mil in items, 45,000 LP, and I get an Omen navy, which is worth, uh, let's see, Omen navy. These prices are always changed, why I'm actually looking at it. All right, well, these are kind of high prices, but they're, they're 60 mil, we'll say, 65 mil, whatever that one happens to be. So um, you could probably get them a lot cheaper at Jita or Amar, because those are the bigger trade-ups, but you get the idea. So that's how, okay, and I'll just go ahead and show you one time me buying something. I'm going to buy an uh, uh, ocular filter chip. Let me see. I'll go to show affordable and make my list smaller. Show affordable only. Um, some LP stores, specifically the LP stores, that aren't faction warfare will have the, the blueprints will be usually where the money is like I know for like Mimitar there's certain corporations and you want to find the right corporations that have the good LP stores you'll make less money if they have a shit LP store and it doesn't give these blueprints and stuff like that um, so ask around research find the best place to um, mission for the faction warfare ones are pretty much all the same it's just you make the faction ships and certain implants and stuff so what was I saying for um Faction Warfare, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get this ocular filter, 12,000 LP, I'll buy it, boom, I want one, accept, and it'll say, are you sure, you're about to get one of these for this much LP and this much ice, and I'll say, sure, boom, alright, so now I have this item, it gives it to me right here, boom, there it is, and if I want, I could sell this item and try to get, it's saying estimated price, but I could try to get my 24 million for it or whatever, or I can just plug it in and I'm going to use it because I don't think I have that implant. I don't really use implants on this character because it dies so much. I'm bad at game, but... Oh, actually, I actually already have that implant. I'm, I'm going to unplug this one. I got a better one now. I got the standard one. So I'm going to go to... Uh, I'm going to pause my skill queue. Pause training. Okay. Character sheet. Augmentations. Unplug. Yes, destroy it. Bra. Boom, and now I'm gonna plug this better one in. This is a standard, that was a basic. Yes. Oh, I don't have Cybernetics 4. Bad at game. Okay, so I can't use it. I just blew up a fucking implant for nothing because I'm stupid. Such is life. 
So anyway, I'm just turn my skills back on and not worry about it. I don't, I don't really give a shit. Um, start training. And my time's probably going to go up a little bit because I did that. Thank you! But those are learning implants which speed up and slow down your have rate your rate that you train at. Um, so that's the LP stores. That's what you do. And like I said, you get like, um, for Mimitar, you get like the five run um, uh, Republic Fleet Gyro Stabilizer. For Galente Corporations, you'll get like the five run blueprint for a um, Fed Navy webs, which are like the highest range webs. So they are usually go for 70 mil a piece. You make five of them, that's like 30, 350 million. Um, and that's like where the money is for doing missions for them usually, like certain items like that. And for Faction Warfare, you, you, it, the LP is kind of weighted differently because so much LP gets produced. So I generally just make ships because I'm trying to convert hundreds of thousands or millions of LP at once into billions of ISK. Um, I do it with ships because that's how you're, you know, if I make 20 fucking APOC navies, I only need to make that many sales and I get huge chunks of ISK, where if you do the cheaper stuff, you got to sell tons and tons and it might take forever and people are constantly losing ships and buying new ships, so it's pretty good to convert huge amounts. Um, so that's war, standings, missions, LP, um, and generally LP is where the money is at. If you do this on the missions, like, there's bounties on the dudes, they drop mods, and if you want to drop, like, tractor units and salvage all of the stuff and wrecks, it, it, it depending on where you are, it might be worth it. If you're way out somewhere far away from a trade hub, yeah, it might, it's probably worth it to do that stuff because uh, you can produce stuff people want or sell that stuff directly. All the mods that the pirates drop, you'll also be getting bounty income, you'll be getting mission rewards, and then you get LP. And uh, if you're doing it right, the LP is going to make you more money than all the other things combined, or it'll be close to equal. So don't shortchange yourself on what you do with your LP and who you mission for. It's very very important. Um, I think that's about covered. This is it, we're running kind of long. We see. I didn't probably mean to do it this long. I'm sorry for that. 37 minutes. That's good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end it right there. Uh, I'm Doctor Bar Mitzvah. My corp is I Want Alpha. That's what I'm calling this silly little show I'm doing too. Uh, and uh, you can join us in game at I Want Alpha. All one word is our channel. Please subscribe. Bookmark me. Check out my stuff. Uh, leave some comments, tell me if I suck, um, and I'm sure I misspeak or say things wrong or something that's inaccurate or, or too general, and if anything like that you want to correct me, I don't get upset. Go ahead and read comments, hey, at uh, minute 15 you said this, it probably should have said that. Do it, please. Help people out. We're, we're here to help newbies, people that don't understand this stuff, and uh, I don't understand it all fully myself. I kind of know what I need to know to do what I do. And uh, that's about as far as I go with most things. But it's good to have a better understanding. And sometimes I'm just wrong about stuff. Uh, Eve's, like I said, there's all these little facets and details to it. Um, I also wanted to say, too, um, some of my friends noticed this. And they're like, oh, dude, you kind of like her emulating Day 9. Uh, he was another streamer. I used to do tutorials for StarCraft videos. Uh, he did like 400 episodes, and they're great. If you're into StarCraft, you really love his show. You want to get good, his show will help you get good. And... Uh, yeah, I am coming in, kind of emulating him. Like, I loved his show. I used to watch it all the time. I watched it for years. And uh, I haven't been lately. I kind of got out of StarCraft and stuff. And I don't even know if he does StarCraft anymore. He's probably doing on to, uh, on to other things by now. Um, but, uh, yeah. I just wanted to bring that up real quick and say uh, Day9 is the man. Definitely decided someone needs to make, like, his show for Eve, where his show is for StarCraft. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do help out newbies and stuff like that so I just wanted to pop that out there and I'm going to go ahead and end it there we're hitting 40 minutes and that's I didn't even want to go that long I would try to do these real short but there's just so much to cover and uh, as time goes on when I get to uh, get over all this newbie stuff all the simple basics we'll start doing just rooms and you'll just see me out there fighting all day and stuff like that um, but I'm kind of sick still and lazy and I didn't feel like multitasking so I just left my ship docked up where normally I'd probably be out in space doing stuff while I'm talking um, and I guess we'll just go. Have a wonderful day. I love you.